So we've got all these amazing toys, but somewhere in our brains, most of us lost the ability to actually play with them. Like Peter from Hook when he forgot to fly. Stupid lawyer. But check it out, fellow kids. I'm in a game that lets you play with your action figures like an adult. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to play the best part of action verse, combat. I'll cover the basics for attacking, defending, counter strikes, and abilities. Don't freak out. I'm gonna walk you through this easy piece. I base this game on several TTGs or tabletop games with low crunch and fluid logical combat. Action Verse is a brand agnostic tabletop game, which means you can play it with any of your existing action figures. You don't have to buy anything extra. You can play with your own customs, or you can use established IP. These figures are only being used as examples of other brands. I am not claiming any affiliation or ownership of these brands and not associate Action Verse IP with these IP. Thanks lawyers for making me have to say that. Choose gear and weapons that you can use in combat, interact with the objects, and of course, murder. The core mechanic of this game is action economy, which really invokes player advocacy. Your player is assigned to a number of actions they can take on their turn. Each action is represented by a D6. Whereas in real life, my own actions are represented by overdue bills and a pile of bench warrants. Bob the Eradicator is a character created by our Patreon member, also named Bob. And you can make one too using our rules if you hop onto Patreon if you're cool. I put the D6 by the figure's base so everyone can see how many actions remain. This cuts down on note taking. You don't have to look to the sides of some sheet you had to mark on, shuffling papers around. It's right there, it's on the board. Everyone can see how many more actions you have remaining. The number of action dice you have is your action pool and you draw from this pool throughout the round. A simple action costs one dice and we call this burning a dice when you spend it. Some actions are big and they burn multiple dice. The most simple action is movement. Bob takes the first action of his turn. Nothing going on in the hallway, so Bob burns a dice to move. You can move up to 12 inches and burn one dice. You can move as many times as you have action dice to burn. Weapon ranges are also determined by a simple method. Anything beyond 12 inches is far range. Anything under is close and base to base is melee. Katak was created by Starboy Station. Go check him out on IG. And is a ranged fighter. Like a good little camper, Katak is perched high. His targets are minions. Minions! Minions have all the abilities and multiple actions like a character does, but they're one-hit kills. Katak's long rifle places him out of range of the minions' close weapons so he can fire at them without risk of a counter-strike. Don't worry, I'll go over counter-strike later. Four, fives, and sixes are always hits when attacking. Five hits for three dudes. Kinda overkill, but nothing like making sure, I guess. Weak sacks get squashed good. All right, I got a baddie putting Bishop in a pickle. Might want to bail him out. But then there's that nice unattended trunk sitting over there and who knows what kind of goodies are packed in it. To get to the trunk, Bob would have to move again, but he's also got a special ability, rapid attack. Free move and then 2d6 attack. It makes him really fast like Nightcrawler in the White House scene. Just bounce around all nimbly bimbly, stabby stabbing everybody. Instead of burning an action dice to move, Bob takes his free move and then shoots at the baddie with a 10 millimeter pistol for 2d6. Hey yo, eradicate! Now for that trunk. The trunk has two targets, so no matter what object you encounter, there are two ways to solve it. One is durability, so he can choose to smash it open, or intelligence, which he can choose to pick the lock. The target is three for intelligence pick. He does have a 2d6 for intelligence. This means if you interact with an object, you burn one dice, and then those two d6s are free. Just like in combat, four, fives, and sixes are a hit. Each success counts as one hit against the target, just like hit points, even though you're not really destroying it. So close. Ah oh man, outsmarted by a box. Bob decides to hold his remaining dice, adding it to his base defense. Speaking of defending, Old Daddy Eddie, made by playing with 3.75, is brandishing his papa's wheel gun. Ain't good enough bullets to shoot all the men that could have been your daddy. Eddie comes face to face with a berserker, a batty melee fighter. <sighs> Eddie starts cracking off shots with his revolver and hitting twice. Every character has a base defense die, which does not come from their action dice pool. Typically, it's a single D6, but 
After being attacked, a target can choose to burn dice from their pool and add to their base defense. When saving, only fives and sixes block hits. The Berserker loses one luck and has three action dice remaining. And, oh look, it's now his turn. The Berserker uses his special ability Charge to burn one dice to move, but gets three d6s to make a melee attack. Nice! Eddie chooses not to burn a dice and rolls his base defense of one. Again, the player agency of having to make choices even on other players' turns keeps people engaged and having to make constant decisions. Bishop, sporting their father's service helm, was created by Task Force Figures and Games. There is a danger in attacking, and that is if the enemy is in range, they can counter-strike. Bishop has four actions and... hold on. Okay, one of the things that drives me insane about modern figures is the inability to hold weapons like why? Why aren't these arms going down? This guy's last, like, this is ridiculous. If you can't hold a weapon in this reality, you die. Oh, but that's not the player's fault, so let's swap him out for a superior figure. Ah, much better. Okay, now, where were we? Bishop and his target are both armed with close range weapons and are in range of each other. Bishop burns one action to fire and his assault rifle grants him two extra dice. Let's assume he failed his defense rolls and takes two damage. Okay, really the assault rifle has a lot more stats to it, but I don't want to complicate this. I just want to get through the action part. But just know what weapons you outfit your characters with matter. After damage is dealt, and if he's in range, Zhang Xu can return fire or counter-strike. His submachine gun grants him three bonus dice due to its high rate of fire. Skipping defense rolls again, let's say two get through. It's Bishop's turn still. He has two action dice while Zhang Xu has three. Not great odds, and he, oh, well, he's going for it. Okay. Two hits. <laughs> okay, this time I remembered that the assault rifle inflicts double damage. I didn't do that before. Look, I, I didn't make up the rules, okay? Whatever, man. Leave me alone. Zhang Xu only has four luck, so with six hits, he's out. I'm not going to cover luck and injuries and surviving death in this video, okay? That's going to be the follow-on one, but just we're, we're getting through this. We're getting through. Bishop advances, burning his last action dice. <laughs> Oh, what's this? Someone's coming. What the? Brock, 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 brock. Cluck fires, his shotgun giving him two extra dice. Oh, bad news bears. Bishop is out of action dice and can't counter strike, leaving him with just a D6 to defend. Let's put all this together. Brent Tart, a Ronin, was created by Captain Crabgrass. He sights in on, oh my god, what is that? Oh, uh, whatever it is, it needs to die. Tart uses his charge shot ability, letting him fire 3d6 with his long rifle. The rifle gives him plus one to each roll for being precise, so two hits. I feel like a sportscaster narrating a football game. I'm gonna lean into that for as long as I feel like it. The creeper's base defense is a one, and he chooses to burn a die to boost it, but still one gets through. And being a melee fighter, the creeper is out of range to counter-strike, and he just takes it like the beta male he is. Weighs his options. Cracks a shot off for a one hit. And the creeper takes another one, probably in the face. Joey's rifle cannot fire at closer range, so he takes a free action to swap the weapons, knowing what's coming next. Creeper's turn. Burns an action to move. Still has a ways to go before he can get his claws literally into Brent. Creeper burns another die to get closer. Alright, I'm done with that. From here, the Creeper uses its ability to move and then gain two free D6s. Joey has only one for defense and blew his action dice, but... He's got two Surge dice. These are special dice that are set aside that you can use once at any time for any roll during the game. Using the Surge dice lets him block one hit. Tart uses his last Surge to counter-strike with his pistol. The Creeper, having one more action dice, decides not to use it to defend and stays with one die. Nothing! You suck, bug face! That was the last action. The round is done, and all the players refresh their action dice pool. Trent is definitely screwed in the next round. If you enjoyed that, go ahead and smash that like button for me, please, and thank you.
Big shout out to all our Patreon members. You guys increasing support has helped us not only invest into this channel, but also with the development of this game. If you're interested in making your own character or playtesting this, go ahead and join our Patreon. All members are receiving a playtest copy of the rulebook. And in the future, we're gonna send a free version as well as a customized character card to each member. Thanks so much. Be sure to check out this cool video on how to make a character or maybe this video over here.